the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace. I'm here to tell you that's not a thing. Perhaps you're concerned with others who come to mind as you look around the room, noticing who isn't here today. Folks you know and love, maybe people you haven't seen for a while, who just might be hungry to hear they matter too. This past week, news of Her Majesty's death reminded me of one of her Christmas sermons. Yes, Queen Elizabeth could preach. Not just with her life, but with her lips. And then there was this one simple, very powerful homily she gave. Just imagine it. English, England's longest ruling monarch, a woman who served longer than any female monarch in the world, in fact, sharing about how her Christian faith sustained her for living into a ministry of public service to which she was called by birth, a vocation and sacred calling to which she gave herself fully, serving faithfully for 70 years. I know most of us in this room don't yet know what 70 looks like, but some here do. Even as the queen rests in peace, rises in that particular glory that is known to all of us one day in the nearer presence of God, Elizabeth's witness still speaks volumes to us in the words she offered in that homily, words that were full of that characteristic understated dignity whenever she spoke, but especially when she talked about her faith. Elizabeth said, for Christians, as for all people of faith, Reflection, meditation, and prayer help us to renew ourselves in God's love. The Christmas message, Elizabeth insisted, shows us that this love is for everyone. There is no one beyond its reach. I didn't stream any episodes of The Crown this weekend. I don't know if any of y'all did. But I did take notice of the many tributes that people kept posting to Her Majesty. Maybe you watched the service honoring her life. Somehow I got into thinking about the movies. There are a lot of them made about her, but I was considering, not Elizabeth, but whether I could tally up the number of films that have been made from stories involving tales of human rescue. I don't know how to search for that on the web. We're all still learning how to probe those corners of the internet, but I bet such a database exists. From drama to sci-fi, animated films to documentaries, there've got to be thousands of rescue stories featured in the movies. One such biographical survival story was released by director Ron Howard this year. It's entitled 13 Lives, and we can all catch it streaming on a certain prime video purveyor. Maybe some of you have seen it already. I haven't, but I do remember that summer 2018 when news of this rescue riveted all of us. There were these boys, along with their soccer coach, that had gone out to have some fun, do some team building after practice, and they got trapped for 17 days in the underground caves at Tam Luang in Northern Thailand. This group of young people, ranging in age from 11 to 25, had gone exploring and got trapped by rising water levels trapped for two whole weeks during monsoon season. Yes, they were in peril. International rescue efforts involved more than 10,000 people as experts raced the clock to discern whether they should drill or dive to get them out. British divers and Royal Thai Navy SEALs ultimately conducted that underwater evacuation. And you might have noticed that two of those Thai heroes ended up dying, one during the operation itself and another a year later from an infection that he contracted as they were taking on those risks willingly to help pull off the stunning rescue. Amazingly, boys and their coach all were saved. Now, this is just one example of the exquisite care and consideration that people all around the world were willing to mobilize to help these youth in a moment of vulnerability. I can't help but be reminded of the even more
more magnificent ways that God finds to rescue us again and again. Whether we've gotten ourselves into dangerous scrapes from the choices we have chosen to make or simply struggle because life happens and stuff will be. Whatever the case, divine love never leaves us stranded. Jesus says in today's gospel, God is a shepherd, rescuing even the most adventurous lost sheep. God is a woman, scouring her house for that single precious lost coin. And in that third story that rounds out this theme, next Sunday, we'll hear how God is a parent, hanging on for dear life to all the children in God's family, even when our connections with one another seem strained beyond repair. Because each of us counts. And God's family is not complete without everyone. If you're like me, sometimes that can feel a little bit confusing. God's care is fierce like that. It's hard to wrap our minds around the love that never gives up. But it's there for us, even when we can't grasp it. Like the tiniest member of that Thai soccer squad who had to let a retrofitted mask be strapped on his face and then the, the diver sedated him and took him under. We, too, can trust that God's love will bring us safely home through all of life's changes and chances. Jesus' stories insist that we matter to God more than anything else in the world. Every single one of you counts. That's true if you've been a part of this church since before you were born. It's true if today is the very first time in your life you've ever set foot inside the building. You matter to this community, whether you've sung in the choir for 16 years or you're still figuring out how Sundays fit your regular family rhythm. Jesus knows there is a distinctive job for which you and you alone are best suited. And there is nobody who is not welcomed to be at the table as we continue to shape ministry here at St. Paul's, especially in those high-visibility spots like that team of leaders we call the vestry of our church, and in our ongoing experiments discerning how best to support the children and young people that God has entrusted to this community, whose faith helps teach Christians of every age where God is showing up in the world to rescue us as we face life's surprises and challenges together. Yesterday, I got to be part of a, a service, a special service in our diocese that was a Spanish-language community and I got to hear the confession of some young people. And at the end of that service, there's a line where the person who absolves the confessor of their sins says, pray for me too, a sinner. The stories today teach us that we're all part of that. We're blessed. We're sinners. God wants each and every one of us. We all matter. So you never know when that important call is going to come convincing you that Jesus indeed needs you. You matter to Jesus, to me, even though you might resist that idea at this particular moment. It's early yet. But each of us counts. When it comes to these sacred connections, God has come to build and strengthen among us. And our community won't be complete without you. I look forward to seeing our faith and courage and delight deepen and grow in the days ahead as we trust the loving one who is always coming to find us, the God who celebrates new beginnings and infinite possibilities, the one who rejoices over all of us whenever we are gathered together to feast on such generous love. Let's dig in.